What's up guys, Gimzer and welcome back to yet another preview. Welcome back to 20 previews in 20 days and today we are going to talk about the team Corfages. It wasn't the team I had uh, planned to do. Um, I mentioned another continent uh, and then I realized after saying that that this team I talked about did not release their jersey because this is the fucking 15th of January and unless they're rocking the exact same jersey as last year they haven't released it yet. So we're going to have to wait for EF. Um, so we're going to go back to Europe with uh, the first French team of this, um, these rankings. Kofidis with uh, an interesting 2021 season. Obviously Kofidis is a team that relied in a huge part to their sprinters or on their sprinters, sorry, uh, i.e. Elia Viviani and Christophe Laporte. Um, and they actually gave us three quarters of their win, the um, former European Championship bagging five Ws and Christophe Laporte winning four times. Um, at that, the wins of Guillaume Martin, Victor Lafay and uh, Retus Herada, which I've actually called Victory Lafay because I felt like the pun was, I had to be done. Uh, and it, it is in no way a typo. Um, that gives us 12 wins for Kofidis this year. Not the best of seasons, but probably not the worst that led them to a 15th place in the UCI ranking as well. And the wins they've had, um, so they've only had, I think, one win in World Tour, which was Victor Lafay winning on the Giro. Um, but you've got Guillaume Martin that did well on Paris-Nice, um, despite not winning, uh, obviously finishing, uh, or oh, at one point being second of the Tour de France, um, doing well-ish in the GCs, I think finishing eight on the Tour. And mine on the Vuelta, I think. Um, I think you've got Dvarst of Vlanderen, that's either being won or runner up by Christophe Laporte, one of the two. Um, and also, what's worth mentioning is that the year before that, Kofidis only had won twice. So they've, they've multiplied their tally by six, which is a huge progression. And said progression will carry on because, oh my god, the transfers of Kofidis! There's so many names. I was actually like scared I wouldn't be able to fit them on the screen. Uh, but joining the team, Ioni Zagiré, Brian Cocard, David Chimolai, David Villa, Max Valscheid, Zander Armé, Wesley Kreller, Benjamin Thomas, François Bidard, Alexis Renard, Alexandre Delettre, Axel Zanglen, Hugo Toumir. And leaving, Elia Viviani, Jean Pidruca, Christophe Laporte, Nathan Haas, Nicolas Aide, Fabio Sabatini, Nathan Elberan, Fernando Barcelo, Emmanuel Morin, and Attilio Viviani. <sighs> Take a breath. Now let's analyze. Uh, we'll start with the departures. The two big names you're losing are Elia Vianney and Christophe Laporte. They gave us 9 out of your 12 wins last year, so it is a big L. Um, now let's be honest, the L is to lose Christophe Laporte. Uh, he was in good condition, he's sure, very good sprinter, but he cannot go over the hills, he can go very well over the cobbles, he's shown it by getting P6 on Paris-Roubaix. Whereas Elia Viviani never really found his feet uh, at Cofidis. He had, I mean, he was on the Giro and was remarkably shit. Uh, I feel like Simone Constantly was the best sprinter for Cofidis. Um, and I don't really think that's too big of an issue to, to lose Viviani, if I'm being honest. Uh, then you're losing some riders to retirement, Jean Pierre Rucker and Nathan Haas. Um, and yeah, there's no big, big loss. Maybe Nicolai there, who's kind of like the spirit of the team. But when you take a look at the signings, you're strengthening your Spanish core with Ion Izaguirre, because he's always loved um, Spanish riders and the Vuelta. And Ion is an incredible signing in my eyes. Sure, he's not exactly the youngest now anymore, but he's still very much able to do something. Uh, and I'm quite curious to see what he does. You're adding David Chimolai, who had a very, very strong Giro and, I mean, arguably better than Elia Viviani's, and he's maybe a bit more complete. David Villela, good for the hills. Max Valstrad, very decent time trialist, decent sprinter, decent in cobbles, very in, an all rounder. Zander Armé, Wesley Kreder, Benjamin Thomas, you're getting another French rider that can time troll very well. François Bidard, can climb. Alexis Renard, young prospect from Israel Startup Nation. Um, I think got like P2 last year on a, on a classic or something, or like maybe the Tour de Benelux, I'm not sure. Um, then three younger riders with Alexandre Lettre, uh, Axel Zangli and Hugo Tumir who come from the um, either uh, under-23 scene or continental. Uh, but you've got also one key signing which I haven't mentioned, and that is Brian Kokar. And we're going to talk a bit more about Brian Kokar for one reason. He is my one steward ahead of this season. Now sure, um, usually you go for a younger rider or someone a bit um, under the radar, but Brian Kokar 
is such an interesting case. He's 29 uh, for the French sprinter, 45 wins to, uh, to his tally, which has to be mentioned. 45 wins is a decent number, even if you're a sprinter, right? You're halfway, um, I mean, you've got halfway 100. You're halfway to 100, sorry, so that's not too bad. Um, but he's got a very interesting parkour. Uh, he was formed with Europe Cup back in 2013, 2014, I think. Uh, and then, then he made a career move, which was um, ambitious, but sadly didn't work out for him because he decided to join Vital Concept, uh, or at the time, BNB. And they never made a dual tour, but mainly they did not make the Tour de France until 2020. Meaning that despite being a 29-year-old French sprinter with experience and a lot of wins, he's only done the Tour de France five times. Uh, and I, I believe he didn't do a lot of the Tour de France last season as well. Um, so that's something I want to see him excel at, or not, not necessarily excel at, but I want to see him get, get more confidence on Grand Tours. Um, he finished on the podium five times, he nearly won a stage back in 2014 or 15, losing the, to like the slimmest of hair to Marcel Kittel, which, I mean, that hair makes him not a stage winner on the Tour de France, but mainly it doesn't make him a, a, a stage winner on World Tour. Brian Cocard never, ever, ever won a World Tour stage. And I feel like Kofidis could be the team. Only issue if, well, regarding the Tour de France, Kofidis has as much success on the Tour as Brian Cocard. Zero. Now, overall, I think for now, Kofidis is the team I've ranked higher, or highest. Now, just know that if I give them three and a half star, or in this case, 3.25 stars out of five, it doesn't make them a better team than a team that would be ranked 2 out of 5, right? It's just that I feel like the whole, uh, well, all of my criteria give them a better grade. But I don't know, if I give UAE 3 stars, or if I give, I don't know, Duke 3 stars, it doesn't make them worse than Confidence, all right? Uh, but I've given them 3 stars on 2021 season. I mean, as I said, they've uh, six, sextupled? Six to uh, rough. T time is six the win, yeah. Transfer wise, I mean, they got rid of Deadwood, they got rid of Viviani, which I feel like they had to. Yes, they lost Christophe Laporte, which is an L, but they've replaced it. They've replaced everyone, basically. They've signed like an entire roster. Um, ambition, three star. I need that someone to go and uh, either help or challenge Guillaume Martin. And I don't think that's Yoni Zagiri. I feel like these two will not really race a lot together. Maybe on the Vuelta, where Guillaume Martin will probably be doing the Tour de France, or the Giro, but I don't think they'll be leader on a single race together. And the kit, uh, three out of five. Um, at first, I didn't like it. Uh, I felt like it, it looked like, the, like, like a Marlboro jersey, but like a, like a fake one. Um, and I'm starting to, to become not a fan, but I'm starting to like it. I just don't really like the back of it. Um, but yeah. That gives Kofidis 3.25 out of 5. But this is where we're going to wrap up this preview. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you didn't, please do leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing um, to not miss my content in the coming days or weeks. Um, there's a PCM caramel that will come soon. Like, expect end of July. Oh, no, sorry, end of January, maybe. Um, but mainly, there's going to be another preview tomorrow. Uh, and... If I say um, la fuga de la fuga, or I don't know, I don't know, I'll see that tomorrow. But until then, my name has been Guillaume. Have an amazing day. Adios.